Well, gentlemen, hello everyone. Um, Stuart Lockhead with us this week. Phil Attridge back from his travels in deepest, darkest England. And Alex is away to England for a holiday. Uh, he's on a canal boat. Aye. Yeah. On, the, on the Grand Union Canal. Sounds like it. Not, not a bad plan, but whatever it is. Uh, let's hope he doesn't drown. Make Good right. timing, right enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, First Minister's question. Questions. 6th of June. What did you think, Stuart? Well, death banging, that's how it started. Oh, it was, a bit rowdy. It, it was a bit rowdy. rowdy. The deputy presiding officer didn't really assert an authority properly, so the first five to ten minutes was rowdy school children again. Lots of desk banging, lots of cat calling. Um, what was it really about? Uh, the quote that I see Joanne Lamont used was, Love that dare not speak its name. Uh, this was in reference to apparently the fact that in the by election <coughs> in Aberdeen Dawnside at the moment, the SNP have not mentioned independence. Although I didn't think independence was an issue for a by election. No. Really, it's not much of a. But that's a bit of a cheat coming from her, really, because they've been talking about independence, because with the way her head was glued to that pad in front of her, the last thing she has is any independence of thought. She does what she's told, I think. Mean. Well, what? I mean, she was the one that brought up the thing at question time about independence being the only thing that Sam had talked about, which was not true or accurate. And yet she's always the one that brings it up. Yep, always. Always the one that brings it up. And I didn't see a question. I, I have no idea what her question is, was. Is there, was a, it, is why there ever a question? Why isn't Ying Ying or Yang Yang or whatever she's called pregnant seem to be... I mean, how many bloody panda jokes did she tell? And certainly at least two, if not three. Well, I thought, I thought Salmon did some quite good Millie Panda jokes. <laughs> Millie Panda? David Millipanda, because oh, he looks like a panda, doesn't he, with the true. eyeballs, you know, yeah, Millipanda, that's uh, Steve Bell's name for him. And, and what's this about Alistair Darling's going to the Tory conference? Oh yeah, he's going to speak to the, to the Tory party conference. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, how, how, how inept and stupid is that? Why would he want to go... Um, it's the Labour Party. Yeah, I know. I mean, Joanne Lamont came out with her something for nothing. The London-based Labour Party is now on the same track with having admitted, I believe, yesterday that they're not going to reintroduce child benefit universally. Um, that End of universal benefits. End of the welfare state. Well, as was said End earlier, security. once one universal benefit goes... Well, the principle's gone, so then you can it. just cut them as... To End of the health them. service. I mean, have you heard them screaming about that? End of the health service. They're actually sitting back and just going along with everything. Um, I mean... Who are? Well, the, the, the Labour opposition down there, they're either, they either agree with the Conservatives, um, which I find difficult to believe, or they're, they just are craven. Well, look, basically they what just don't have any bottle at yeah, all. What happened today was um, Alec Thamond and Joanne Lamont were accusing each other of, of moving to the right, huh. politically, except I got the impression that, that Joanne Lamont's attack was a defence, simply get in first and repeat. Well, I mean, it's been an extraordinary week if you think about it. I mean, basically what it means is, is the Tory machine has convinced everybody it appears, except the SNP, that universal benefits are out, that the only way to get through this is to make the poor poorer and the rich richer. Mm -hmm. And it's been bought hook, line, and sinker. But there by, is no opposition in by West, uh, every Westminster. Every part, every party of Westminster. If you listen to Joanne Lamont and you listen to the others, because they sit there now, they are. They're all buying it. I mean, it's come out of Joanne's mouth itself with the something for nothing society, the whole lot. But other than that, they sit back in some kind of Walter Mitty kind of situation where we're left wing because we're Labour. We always have been left wing. While they're embracing. Um, neo-liberal, extreme right-wing views. No, um, I, I actually wouldn't go and that they far. They just because live in some other worldly planet that they're somehow left-wing. It's not, it's not about socialist or capitalist, it's about London. It's oh, about yeah, London and the South East, because 30% of the votes for Westminster are in the South East. So essentially, if you can't get them, you're not getting in power. It doesn't matter what your principles are. 
You have to con convince that part of the country to vote for you mm -hmm. in order to get in power to change your principles. Yeah, but they'll get you into know, power. Then from they what won't. you told the electorate. Yeah. But then they get into power. So this is all about getting into power uh, and then doing nothing or just carrying on what the government that you replaced mm, is just... doing. Whereas the whole idea of democracy, as far as I'm concerned, is a free and open exchange of ideas where you try and convince and talk other people around. When you start talking about um, a progressive tax system, you start talking about what you can do, about, as they are now, terrified about what they can't do or anything. They, they've swallowed the whole neocon stuff, hook, line and sinker. You, you've got... The Labour Party won't get in in Scotland in the ne at the next election, regardless of whether it's a yes or no vote. I think with a, a no vote, I think the no vote will annihilate Labour well, in this they country. Won't, they won't get in. I mean, I'm very confident. You mean a, a majority of MPs of Westminster? No, no, I'm talking about uh, in, yeah, yeah. in Hollywood. Hollywood. I think the, the SNP, I mean, I'll bang on about this thing again, about the SNP almost by accident have become what the Scottish Parliament was hoped to be, which was a Parliament of consensus for the good yep. of Scotland. Mm -hmm. And the SNP, by their nature, by being definition such are, a yeah. spread of political views from right, right through to left, have... have taken that ground and nobody can assail them at the moment, I don't think. Um, but Westminster is destined now for the next 10 or oh, 20 years or more, more to long. be Tory. It's, it's turning into a nasty and little Tory, xenophobic well, it's part, looking, part of Europe. It's looking like Tory UKIP. I'm, I don't mind this UKIP some lip. And don't, uh, well, don't, well, don't forget you've got 20, you've admitted it, it's 20, but the names are now, but I'll put money on them while I'm seeing Davidson, um, that want Miliband, and, and this will grow, this will really grow and get nasty, to go for the in-out referendum. Labour is going to do that. Labour will We're go for the in-out referendum. EU. EU. Labour will do it. Um, Westminster, England, down there, is just turning, going to turn into a nasty um, rump part of Europe, a well, nasty xenophobic was, part of Europe. There was an interesting piece, um, not by, but an interview with the Norwegian Prime Minister, whatever, who said he could not understand why Britain would want to come out of Europe to join the that conclave, what they call EFTA. EFTA, is it? Something like that. But because, because they let them join he says, it. Well, they pay. They as have to pay the money, yeah. And they have to obey every single one yep. of the laws, and they have no input. And his argument is, why put yourself in that position? Mm -hmm. It will end up costing you exactly what it costs you in order to gain access to the market. It's, I, I just, it's because they can then be on their own and British. It's all part of that weird mindset. It's a little Englander. It is. It's, it's a strange mindset. They've had it for centuries. They strut about, you know, I mean, well, you watch them. I, um, no, I'm sorry, I haven't... You see with the EDI, I haven't you see it with it, their football supporters, you, you, you watch it with Farage, you well, watch it with... The, 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 the English sorry, people I was born and brought up down there. Well, the English people I interact with seem very like Scottish people. Well, it's like a one to three... I mean, they tend, they tend to be working like that, class huh? and they tend to be Labour supporters. So I, 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 I really can't think of an instance where I've had what people talk about as little England. Well, I mean, they go on and on, bang on about fish. immigration all the time, yeah, yeah, which yeah. you spent. I mean, as you know, I still spend a fair bit of time down in the south of England and with loads of relatives. And uh, as I say, the local village shop, when I went in to buy a Guardian on the Saturday, the guy behind the counter gave me a funny look. Who not sell it. You've got the Daily Telegraph, the Daily Express, the Daily Mail. Guardian? And the guy's a Tory yeah. councillor, mind you, the guy that runs the shop. And do you know the funny thing about a lot of these people, that, particularly when you get London, where about half the population now is a minority, ethnic minority, you get people going on about foreigners and going on about immigrants, and you're looking at them and you're going, and where do your folks come from? Um, you know, because, well, it's like, you know, they're all, most but people in London are from somewhere else. Is it a huge difference? Is there a, is there a massive cultural difference well, the, all the, the view of the Scots and the view of oh, that best. part of England. The best, the best thing about going to London is when I get back on a train, get, or the best thing to come out of London, mate, mm -hmm. is the A1. Mm -hmm. No two ways at 70 mile an hour. Well, uh, London is either, you're either, it's, it, it's marmite for a lot of most people don't yeah, like. It's, don't good like for, it. it's good for a visit. Um, I don't, Entertaining. I don't mm -hmm. visit as often as no. you do. I go to the West Country, which is very, very little different from uh, South East, as far as I can tell. Certainly politically. Very, you know, there's very few Labour 
that um, well, that, MPs. That, now that we've established that we can't remember what Joanne Lamont was talking about, and therefore we won't discuss it, <laughs> Ruth got back onto her baby, baby ashes. ashes scandal. That was quite interesting that she, I noticed that one of the other commentators in one of the bigger papers or somewhere else, uh, they wrote a little sketch about uh, FMQs last week and uh, Ruth got, uh, he got, she got bonus points basically because she didn't ask a question, more or less, you know, she didn't ask anything. She didn't ask interest. a political question. Um, and therefore, that was good for her. This week, she banged on about the same thing. I don't, I'm not sure if she... Sounded a bit dodgy sending the letter last thing at night before first answers this question, so you can bring it up. Well, he, he got the letter, but I mean, for once, actually, I'm going to give a credit there. I thought the, because that is affecting huge amounts of people. Um, I mean, that's been right across, and I mean, people uh, and when people are grieving and they've got a loss like that, that can affect them for the whole of their life. And he answered it very well. She, she was persistent because she was on about the individual. It's fine laying the blame on different councils. But there are individuals there that have suffered a loss. They don't know where their loved one is. And it's not all, you know, it's up to 18 months. So it's kids that you've had that have maybe walked. Well, I mean, and that can affect people in all sorts of ways. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, argue, And I thought it was, I the way she did it, I thought it was that, very measured. But she's a conservative. Yeah, no, it's hard and to And essentially yeah. what Alex Salmond has said is we're leaving it in the hands of the councils because they're nearer the ground. And mm. well, he's already got two inquiries going. One, one, into, one looking well, specifically at the Edinburgh yeah. issues, yep. which were Illish, uh, yeah. and the other one, this Lord Bonamy, who I'm not sure how happy he is, but Bonamy. But he did, he, I mean, he clarified it at the end when he says, and after these two inquiries, if there are still any other loose ends and everything else, then they'll have a look there. But also, well, individuals can, go to, can actually go into the inquiry um, and and so well, specifically well, charities have input yeah. rather than I mean it would well, be Sands, bit... Sands is very very close to the ground when it's dealing with people well, Sands is very very so what is Sands it's Scottish uh, it's, it, it's all about um, losing kids early and you know it's an, a natal thing it's there's the, the shop here is up in South Clark Street it's been around for years and years and years it's, um, well, it's a charity supporting parents who've got children that die yeah Okay, sorry I had to draw that out because I didn't know what it was called. Well, was about. Was Scottish anti-natal or something. But we're in, we're in, we look to be at the start, I think. Um, a quarter's programme on STV may well have kicked it off. And notice the Yes campaign are being much quicker about answering questions that are brought up. I don't know if you've noticed that this week. They're being much, much more proactive. Um, the SNP also seem to be getting to the point where they're actually starting to argue, you know, quite aggressively against some of the nonsense from the, the no campaign side. Uh, Ruth Davidson then asks a question that has got nothing to do with politics. In a week in which she's been heavily criticised in the Telegraph, um, the Tory graph as it's known, mm. And yet the best she can come up with is baby's ashes. Well, right? it's populist. Um, it'll give her a human face and it keeps her out of the firing line. It's, it's actually, that's what but I said. Can she to. afford to be out of the firing line? Has she not got to stand up and lead? Yeah, Has sorry, she, she not she got to lay it down a bit? Yeah, well, not, they're not according to your interpretation most weeks. Whatever she says, if it's political, I mean, Sam and I'll just... Yeah. Talk about London. Yeah, so I'm looking for her to be much more clever. Yeah, well, that, yeah, well, that, well, she was clever today. That's it. She, she, she's well, gone through party, this week. Her party don't think so. No, well, whatever she does, the party won't do because she's not really up to it. Um, you know, that, I'm not quite sure about procedure, by the way. That when you look at, um, there was no Willie Rennie, of course, this week. So, um, so, but we got. Oh, wasn't that? Didn't you? <laughs> but if, if the Tory party in Scotland were going to be smart, they'd have put in Murdo Fraser. Mm. That someone. Oh, 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 that, that, that is someone that believes that the Tory party here should, for one thing, change its name. He's a bit more open minded about it when, you know, the, if, if the if independence and that kind of thing. He's Murdo a lot Fraser, sharper. Murdo Fraser has positioned himself for a leadership challenge, there's no doubt about it, because he started popping up now as a better together support, which he didn't do. No. So he's looking for that vote. Hmm. Well, the vote that Ruth Mr. Davison got. His, his, you think about it, his topic had more mileage in it as a, for a political question about um, 
the idea that because Scotland scores more, be, much better than, a, than an average university for uh, getting research funding. In other words, our population is 8.5%, Scottish universities get 15%. The case is, if we get independence, there'll be a lot of money missing. Oh yes, because it's the English and it's London that gives all no, our no, universities no, 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 all this. Well, we know this it is, is wrong, but they just lie. This money comes from the Scottish government, the Westminster yeah. government, but it also comes from charitable foundations yeah. that do not recognise national borders. Yeah, it welcome, goes to where welcome the job can trust. be done. Oh, but when Scotland is on its own, but of course they'll recognise it. it. They'll be terrified to think about it. it. But think about it. I mean, least, it's just fuckmongering. At least Murdo's topic had some mileage, it had, had a bit of mileage in the press over the last mm. couple of days, it was already being talked about, and therefore, it, it, and if somebody else, who, can, who, else, who else, another Tory can come and back them up. Which other Tory was it? Sorry about this. Oh well. No, was it not the visa question, the student no, that, visa question? No, that was an interesting one. The student visas, which is obviously something much talked about south of the border. Well, because it's going to do their universities out of billions of pounds. Uh, I mean, not only are they screwing their unis, they're screwing them twice. It's an irrational result of this paranoia about foreigners in, yeah, England, it, it, in England. It's that little England, and we're all joining foreigners, they're only going to come over here and get all our great, our great benefits and our great welfare. And um, shagging women. Oh, I mean, they're just, it's, it's strange. Um, it's strange, sorry. It, um, here, here's a point, I noticed, talking about just um, Alex Salmon got in, expecting an apology from the Bitter Together campaign. Yeah, yeah. I'd get on to him, that's, that's that, doing your... That's, doing your uh, that's what fired off in my brain about the a slight difference, not a huge difference, but a slight difference from the SNP I've started noticing. They will not be shut up. They were always very polite in interviews and would step back and smile sweetly while somebody else got to kick them. I've noticed that they're not doing that now. No, they won't. They're going, no, no, wait a minute, let me finish. Get the maces you know? out. So they, they seem to be getting a bit more aggressive about it all. Wait for the last year, I should thing. imagine they'll be swinging. But what about a bit of light relief? What about Jackie Bailey? In she comes again. Uh, here we go. You know, let's try and do people out of money that they are that due. Essentially... There, it, there it is in black and white. But I'm ignoring that bit and I'm looking at the other bit, which says they shouldn't. But this one's, you know, I mean... That was think... incredible. She could have stood up and said, look, I found some people who I think you can take money off that they've already been paid. Because if you don't go all the way back to when this contract was signed, but go two years short of the signature of the contract, we can we can claim that but they're not entitled. She uses the magic word, senior management. She says, oh, you will get onto the back of this. And she has that supercilious smirk on her face um, that looks like, why isn't anybody yeah. taking me seriously? Somebody every Monday should hand her a piece of paper that says, you found some statistics, go back two years from that date. How many times has she done it? It just makes sense. The statistics well, about the, oh, the, the virus infection under Labour that she yeah, quoted. Yes, about, yeah, we, we, we oh, are the infection the... capital of Europe kind of thing. Oh, yeah, no, no, you were. Um, yeah, and it's it's sloppy. It's very, very sloppy, and it's... It's, it's, oh, it's what, depressing, isn't what it? What was all the excitement about at the beginning, then? What was all the banging and hoo hawing Was it just the SNP... Not liking the idea of joining scriptwriters. They've unlocked their cells for the day. Improved his jokes. They've let them out for the day, haven't they? Yeah. I, um, I'm, I, I can't remember what the question was. Well, it was about the oh. co economy. No, no, it was about uh, who's, who's why you're not mentioning the... independence. Oh, right, right. Oh, 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 yeah, uh, big deal. And Swinney had been exiled. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was you very good, actually. Yeah, that was that was the camera caught that. That was well, quite a funny picture when they're all going. And he yeah, waves to it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then Salmon stands up and introduces them. Yeah. But that is childish. I mean, the whole thing. And when you actually have a look at the opposition, I mean, it's the opposition that comes up with all these infantile, childish gestures that are banging that are jeering, that are coming up with really nonsensical questions. And you think, I mean, they really, they're the ones that are insulting the Scottish Parliament. I think Labour missed a trick today. I think Labour, in fact, I think Joanne Lamont should have led with it. She should have stood up, congratulated 
all the people, not the Scottish Government, all the people that have brought a 15 year high of an investment mm, to Scotland investment. and used that as a wagon to look positive about the UK. Mm -hmm. She should have got them said, and thanks to all our embassies and business offices yeah. and da 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 da, da a for job. all the yeah. hard work they've done, um, and hopefully in future years. Nah, nah, nah. And you, and you, you said it and made a comment. You thought that perhaps she had a different speechwriter. I, 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 she's she's actually a lot funnier. But she's she not. If you're a, if you're a Labour supporter, perhaps, but I don't. It falls flat. Oh, no, I think Sorry, I'm a Labour supporter. It falls flat on me because I it's think the she's delivery. She's much more amusing than she was. She's, she's not. She's more any, confident. She's not any more penetrative. Um, and I'm sorry, but did you not read that that she wrote that was in one of the thing where the spelling was all wrong? Yes. And, I mean, I'm thinking. I thought she was a school teacher. Well, there was. There was actually. Oh, it was teams. English. <laughs> Couldn't make it up. Yeah, where pour, where oh. you pour over the paper, P O U R, as opposed to P O R E. I mean, it was piles of you, really stupid did you stuff see like that. Current. Oh no, yep. I'm sorry, that was cringeworthy. Oh my god, the poor lassie. Her son's going to turn into a foreigner. Oh, this, oh, this was better than that. Oh, there's was another one. And she was up in front of Andrew Neil. It was just a lunchtime show. Yeah, at Daily Politics, and Andrew Neil. Oh, he did Actually, he looked sorry Trump. for her. Yeah, well, because, went. I mean, she went in totally unprepared. I mean, he asked her specifics. What percentage would the uh, would it save the government doing away with the top 5% of free bus passes? Oh, oh, it won't be that much. Oh, well, I'll tell you how much it is then. 100 million. Yes, Andrew, you're right. It's like, I really how much? 100 million. And then she said, we would use that to build houses. And Anthony went, and that will make what kind of difference? You know? I mean, build houses, make a profit on it. It might pay for the cost of means. Hang on, is this, is this in the UK? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it was, it, was, it was like watching a bad amateur. Seriously, she was shocking. She's not going to, she's not going to score any points then. And she crumbled. She just, she, well, she literally a, got worse and worse. Well, actually, as a former Labour councillor, I will not mention names here, because I mean, because as a former Labour councillor, did say that, 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 that she is a prime example of um, the incompetence you get when people um, get stations way, way above their capabilities. Um, and he did put it down to, well, it's all women shortlist, so, you know, you're going to get, I mean, a bit of a, you know. Well, uh, I, 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 I in that case, in, was... in, in that case, yeah, but I mean, but in, she's, it, but she's in a it. Bit, but she's a bit of a bruiser when it comes to right. elections. Yeah, yeah, she's good in that way, you know, on, on if she's doing well, the thing. But, yeah. Yeah. but as the Secretary of State for Scotland, sorry, no. You know, it, it, it's not one of her talents. No. Which brings us back to the theory that what the Labour Party is doing are trying yeah. to look totally incompetent so yeah. everybody thinks Scotland couldn't be run by Scots. <laughs> Put her in charge of Social Security, something like that. She could no, I think no, he's right. Or that, you no, know. He's right. They're just going to run, run the Holyrood Root Parliament into the ground while appearing to be incompetent. Well, well looking like it. also as well, I mean, you heard that from Gordon Brown, that in the event of a no, that they're getting nothing. I mean, he's not even a leader now, but, you know, because... Oh, I fully expect to see a white paper involving no more... Oh, I can see a retraction. No I can more see a retraction. referendums um, for independence. But as I was reading, that means the next referendum, because there will be another referendum. Oh, it's irrelevant whether we lose this, whether this lot lost or not. There will be another referendum because they are so stupid down south uh, that they Westminster is so stupid and arrogant, uh, arrogant more than stupid because they, you know, that, that's the wrong thing. They aren't, they aren't stupid, um, just arrogant, and they'll look up and they'll think yes, and we'll shove it in because they don't want it, and then the iron will get, and the next time. Because Labour will get wiped out up here. I mean, with this, with Miliband and doing it in the welfare state and everything else. So which referendum are we going to be getting? I will probably get the one after. I, 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 I would be... But no, you, you never know. Well, you a Scottish know. referendum or a European oh, referendum? Oh, no, forget the European referendum. I, I think if, if we vote to come out of Europe, I think it will be a, a referendum within a year yeah, for I Scottish think, independence. Yeah. And the best thing I... The best quote I heard today was something for something.
something yeah. for something society. Something for so society, a cohesive society. Right. And a society. Okay. Just actually like a bog standard consensus driven yeah. most Northern European countries. Genuinely one nation. Yeah. The, Scot the Scottish nation. But we all know this we, isn't we one nation. Of, There's a lot of peasants here as well. Yeah. You know? We've kind of wondered a bit today, guys, but uh, right. scores on the doors. Oh, well, I think uh, Salmon's not particularly impressive, but ooh, eight. Um, does he want that? He was all right. He had to, some stupidity to deal with, let's be honest. Joanne Lamont, I don't agree with the, the, the new speechwriter being very impressive. She, as usual, she doesn't have to do, say much. She just got to get her sound bites out and they appear in the press or on the BBC the next day. Uh, she managed that. She made, didn't ask any questions. I'm surprised she wasn't criticised from the, the presiding officer. Um, five. No Willie Rennie, so he gets minus five. Uh, uh, Ruth, I'm not sure if... Uh, I'll give her three, because I don't see... You know, you've got to give her something for presentation. She can always stand up and talk and look reasonably good. Um, wasn't an uplifting speech, though. Yeah. Uh, presiding officer. I'm talking about Ruth Davidson. Well, the presiding officer, um, oh, I don't th think she got a group of it at all. Four. Mm. Mud of the alternative. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll leave it at that. No, no. Well, Salmon, um, I thought he was persistent, consistent. Um, so, I gave it, it was really good the last time of this, but I wasn't. Quite good. Okay. So I'll, I'll go along with the eight. Um, Joanne, I'm sorry, there just wasn't anything there. And, and the presentation, if I was listening to it, it would have probably been better than watching it because I couldn't see her with her head stuck to that, you know, the eyes down all the time. Um, and it does make her look shifted. Um, there was no question. There was nothing substantive there at all. Um, but I, pure loyalty, I'll give her five. <laughs> um, Ruth, um, yeah, for once, Ruth didn't put herself in the firing line about going about Tories, Tories, Tories. Um, and I actually think um, that's actually it's actually quite a serious um, thing that's been happening with the, the way that the arrogance of these councils, the way that they just throw people's Big, kids ashes, and that, yeah, and, and that you know, and just dump them, you know, like so much garbage. Um, and also, she persisted. I did like the way she persists. And Salmon did say she got what she wanted at the end, that at the end of the two inquiries, if there's still anything outstanding, it'll be dealt with. So, and as she's a Tory, and then just to show her that my lord is two-sided, I'll give her a five as well. <coughs> Presiding officer? Uh, I'll give her a two, it was terrible today. She um, yeah, lost a grip right at the start. <coughs> I actually scored Alex on each of his answers. And it was mostly tens. I thought he dealt with uh, Joanne Lamont very well. Um, mm. I thought he was very statesmanly, very sympathetic with Ruth. Yeah. And that was the time to give any ground if there was ground to be given. So I'm, I'm going to give Alex a nine. Mm. I was thinking a nine, but I thought I gave him nine the last time because you never give anybody ten, and he's doing better. So if you give him an eight, he might do even better. Joanne, it, it's just struck me that I'm not listening to what Joanne says. I'm listening for sound bites now, mm -hmm. because she doesn't say anything substantive. Mm -hmm. So she's failing. She's not doing her job mm -hmm. as the leader of the opposition. She's not holding him to account. That's a very good point. It's not being held to account, getting asked why your candidate in a by-election... Um, isn't sorry, talking uh, about independence. What's that got to do in, with the government? In Aberdeen isn't talking about one issue. Um, so I'm, I'm actually giving her a one. I thought it was... In retrospect, although I found it quite amusing in parts, it, it wasn't There's no content, the there's no substance in it, it at all, there's doing, nothing at all, it's vacuous. It wasn't doing the job. Plus, having watched a lot of it, and knowing her accusations to Salmond about continually bringing up independence, it is in fact her that leads with that question. Mm -hmm. All the time, all the so, time. So, for hypocrisy, she loses two points. Ruth Davidson, I, I just felt she's had a bad week, she needed to come back with something heavy hitting, she needed to look like she was really leading the Tory party. She's failed in that, failed badly. Okay, it's very important, but I'm sorry, in the, in the political climate we're in now, it's not as important as the welfare state, 
as they corporation didn't tax. They didn't know well, about I mean, she had the opportunity because corporation tax has been on the agenda. She could have come up with, I'm glad Mr. Samuel agrees with. You know, she could have turned it around, but she, they, they, they don't. I mean, we're talking about them as so though they write their speeches. They don't, but they don't have good enough spite speech writers. So she's getting a one. I thought the presiding officer took too long to get the discipline sorted, so two for her. Mm -hmm. So what we got? Well, Alex, uh, way ahead as usual. Eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight. Well, Alex, 25, mind you, there's one less of us. Mm -hmm. um, Joanne, you both scored her quite well. You both gave her fives. Uh, I gave her one, 11. Ruth Davidson, a nine. Which I suppose over the piece kind of, you know, and the presiding officer only an eight. Now the presiding officer is normally second. I thought the fellow, without being yeah. sexist, the fellow deputy that was last week was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah he seems to be the, the outstanding he, one. You know, he, he gets against uh, 50% 50, 50 is not a good score, as I said, and it was purely just, out of, <laughs> you know. Uh, being a Labour Party member, it's just, I mean, really, yeah, she didn't deserve that. Um, and Salmon's at 80%. Salmon, that's on it, you know, so that's yeah, good. Yeah. Um, and there's always room for improvement when you're at the top. Like, he could be more angry. I said he could get a mace out. He did it again. And then he, he could get the mace with spikes out. He missed you know? the opportunity. That was at the last he doesn't question. Need to. He doesn't need to. The blonde woman, the Labour woman. He could have just got up and said yes, because mm. he was agreeing. And I just wanted to see him do that again. But he could... He doesn't, the whole point is he doesn't need to be that bad, nasty. He doesn't need to, you know, it would be, you know, he could, or well, not even nasty, he doesn't really need to hit that much. You know, he could take them out, he takes them out with a pea shoot. It was, it was a strange question time. It was only really Murdo Fraser's, Fraser's question that did the job of the opposition. Well, exactly, that's what I pointed yeah. out earlier on. He did a better job, really, as a Tory, holding the government to account on oh. the issues that they were looking weak on, according to the press. Yeah. See, but Murdo got done in principle because he thought that the Scottish Conservative Party should, should change its name, should change its name, yeah. to make themselves more electable, um, as it's a toxic name, and he's quite right up here. I mean, that's sensible, but, you know, there's the screams of traitor and all that and treason, you know. Well, um, well gentlemen, we've kind of run over time a bit. How unusual. I'd, I'd like to thank you both for being here. Thank you. And uh, we'll see everybody next week, we hope.